Hey fellow babies, welcome back to the Pactor Factor on Patreon, on Sifted.net. If you are a Patreon patron of Sifted, we appreciate it, you're watching this real time. If you can't afford a subscription on Patreon, it's only a few bucks a month. Um, at a minimum, if you're watching us on YouTube, would you link your Prime account to your Twitch Prime account? The instructions are in the description. We get a couple bucks a month from Amazon. It costs you nothing. If you have done that in the past, you have to renew it every month. So if you're watching this, please hit the pause button and take a second. Let's move on. Our first question from Patreon from Sebastian Baum. Hi, Pack. Why don't third party publishers unite and come up with their own distribution system? Ooh, smart. Instead of paying Microsoft and Sony licensing fees, they're hurting themselves working with existing distribution channels. So why not work together? How would that look? Um, you know, we had that in the 1930s in the movie business. There was a group of artists who decided that they wanted to get rid of the studio system and it was Charlie Chaplin and Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks. I'm wow. showing you how smart I am. You can look this up, I think I'm right. I did not look this up today, I promise. Um, and they formed United Artists. And they were they were trying to get around the studio system because the studios paid actors a salary and these guys decided to collect more of the profit themselves. And they ended up selling to, you know, like Viacom or something down the line. But you know, it's it's the right answer. I mean, I get it. Um, the, the console guys, as long as you have to play a game on a console, the console guys need to make money and they make money on the royalty they charge. So I think the answer to your question is that, you know, Sony and Microsoft charge 30%, uh, much the way Valve does, much the way Apple does for game downloads or for microtransactions. And I think the, the right thing for the publishers to do is take advantage of the streaming services, so Google Stadia, and pit them against Sony and Microsoft. So when Stadia launches, I would bet within a day, Amazon launches as well. Not Stadia subscription, but Stadia free. When Stadia free launches in 2020, Amazon will launch. And you're gonna have two streaming subscription services, I'm sorry, free services, that essentially are gonna say, buy a game on our service. And if you are Activision or EA or Take-Two or Ubisoft, you're gonna say, all right, Google, all right, Amazon, you want our games and you wanna charge 30% take rate? you get our games a year later, two years later. And Google and Amazon are gonna be like, no, we want your, your game the same day. And the publishers will say, okay, 20%. And as soon as Google or Amazon say 20%, then the publishers go to Microsoft and Sony and say, okay, we're gonna give Google and Amazon our games a week before we give them to you. And Sony and Microsoft say, okay, 15%. You know, And I think that's the leverage that the publishers need to accomplish essentially what you're suggesting. Now, the reason that they don't do it direct is there actually is infrastructure required to download games and stream games. And Activision and EA, at least, already do this on PC. So Activision has uh, uh, Battle.net, and EA has EA Origin, and Ubisoft has Uplay. They all have their own, I don't think Take Two has one, but they have their own services. On PC, you got the Epic Store that's charging 12%. So, you know, there, that's the discouragement. Don't build your own network because we, we'll do it for you for 12%. And to be honest, I think the cost of operating your own network is probably 12% of game sales. So I think Epic is priced at break even. And I think they came up with that number because that's, that's kind of the point of indifference. Um, but I think that the best thing that happen to publishers is competition. If there's competition for the content, the publishers can distribute it based on Windows and whoever charges the least gets the first window. Sony and Microsoft can't afford to lose that first window, so they will likely cut their fees. And my guess is we're gonna end up at 20 or below, probably 15. If you end up at 15, uh, publishers win. Um, you won't get a price break on your games if that goes to 15. They will get a profit increase. Fortunately, the publishers will reinvest profits to, to create even more profits. So they will probably make better games. And I think that the consumer ultimately wins. But initially, Activision, EA, Take-Two shareholders win. So that's why I cover stocks, because I actually get this shit. Our next question from YouTube, from Walter Gouveia. Do you think Sony has the upper hand on Microsoft now that it knows Scarlet's launch window? What do you think it does with this information? Will Sony try to launch first? They're going to come out when they come out. 
No, I don't think there's any first or second launch. Uh, they're both 2020. Sony put out specs because they're producing the thing for 2020. Microsoft uh, actually responded to Sony and is launching in 2020. So if anybody is catching up, it's Microsoft. But the truth is, they were both on par on track to launch in 2020. The only times we've had a mismatch of launch windows between Sony and Microsoft is the first time with Xbox. So PlayStation was in the US 2000 and, and Microsoft Xbox was 2001. PlayStation was 99 in Japan, but, but 2000, 2001. And then Microsoft accelerated the Xbox 360 to get in front of the PlayStation 05 versus 06. Then magically they both came together in 2013. Magically they're both coming together in 2020 because Sony ate Microsoft's lunch with the 2000 PlayStation 2 launch. Microsoft for a while ate Sony's lunch and even if you think Sony won, they were even with the PlayStation 4 or 3, excuse me, and the Xbox 360. And Sony ate Microsoft's lunch when they were launched at the same time. So Sony wants to eat Microsoft's lunch, they're gonna launch at the same time, they don't need to get ahead. Microsoft does need to get ahead, but they can't. So they're launching at the same time. I don't think that Sony has any upper hand in anything. Um, I think Microsoft knows exactly what they're doing and Sony knows exactly what they're doing. And it's a level playing field and let's hope they compete on price because that'll be good for consumers. Our next question from YouTube from Crystal Keyframes. The upcoming Pokemon game for Switch is missing a lot of features fans expect. Will Nintendo give in and delay the game so Game Freak can add them? No. If the game is incomplete in the eyes of fans, why not delay it like Nintendo did with Animal Crossing? I actually don't know why Animal Crossing delayed other than it probably wasn't ready. Um, no, Pokemon's coming out. And, and to be honest with you, I think that Pokemon will probably uh, have periodic uh, monster updates, you know, so, so character updates. Um, my guess is it'll be frequent. So it'll probably be monthly. You'll get five or six or 10 or 20. And I think that that's kind of one inducement to keep playing the game. Um, will they charge for them or will they include them? My guess is they'll include most and they'll make some hard to get and hard to earn and let you spend money. But uh, ultimately I expect that you will have all of them. I think their biggest goal is to get you to sign up for their online service. And if they can keep you online just so you get new character updates, and they can get 15 or 20 or 30 million people paying 20 bucks a year, that's an extra two or 300 million bucks, and Pokemon's the hook. So they really don't have to charge you for the characters if they can get you to sign up for the online service. And if they sign up, sign you up for 20 bucks and announce at the time of the Pokemon game, 20 bucks until December 31st going to 30 next year, that is gonna get more people to sign up. So I actually think uh, Nintendo knows what they're doing. I doubt they're gonna charge you for characters, but you never know with them. And again, they could do Pokemon maps. I mean, there could be all sorts of different, you know, territories they could open. They could do essentially Call of Duty DLC. They could do Overwatch character updates that don't cost money. There's all sorts of different ways to monetize. My bias is they go with, you know, character updates that don't cost money and uh, get you, that induce you to join uh, the Nintendo subscription service. So doubt, but I would say delaying the game now, highly unlikely. Um, it, looks, it looks ready to me. I mean, I played it at 83, it looks done. Our last question this week is from Patreon from Ben James Hodges. Hey Pac, why are console manufacturers averse to offering multiple console SKUs at launch? Apple and Samsung launch new phones with very expect sizes features to appear to appeal to multiple budgets. If Xbox One launched with a separate model that didn't include Kinect, would it have been more successful? Well, the last question, absolutely. Um, and I think your question is well taken. Um, we didn't need Kinect. And I think that, you know, that's why Microsoft stumbled out of the out of the blocks. So obviously they dropped Kinect after a year. Um, I think, you know, they they think they have a captive audience. They think that the first 10 or 15 or 20 million consoles are the hardcore fans that are buying no matter what they give them. And you know, so I, I don't think that they will do this, but Sony this cycle could do something crazy like bundles PlayStation VR in with the PlayStation and charge a thousand bucks. And you know, that would be dumb, but they could do it. My guess is they'll have a SKU that has that. And that let's just say, 
PlayStation is 400 bucks and PlayStation VR is 300 bucks. They can bundle them together at six. And I think that they will get a lot of people to buy PlayStation VR. But who knows? I mean, we're going to see what they do. Um, Microsoft, it looks like the specs on this box are pretty high. So I doubt that they're going to have a, a lower price skew. But they're going to still have the Xbox One. And so, you know, I think the smart thing to do would be to keep making the Xbox One and the PS4 for four or five years and drop the price to 149 and then 99 after a couple of years and get people hooked on playing Xbox games and make the library all on sale, all part of Game Pass. Every game ever made for the Xbox is on Game Pass. Buy an Xbox One for a hundred bucks and pay whatever it is, 15 bucks a month for a Game Pass subscription and you can play every game ever made on, on the Xbox. That's what I really think they're gonna do for the budget conscious family. And frankly, GameStop's gonna do that for you. They're gonna bundle an Xbox One used with 15 games for 300 bucks and people will buy it. So, um, I, you know, the real answer though is it's hard to manage a console launch. And when you're comparing uh, Microsoft, Xbox and Sony, PlayStation with Samsung and Apple, it's kind of, uh, Samsung's a big company, but it's, phones is the, a big, big part of their business. Apple, it's two thirds of their business. Um, these are, you know, mega, mega companies. I think Samsung's top five in the world or something. They're giant. Uh, Microsoft's bigger, but they're bigger on the software side than they are on the hardware side. And it's just a hard undertaking. And Microsoft doesn't have a global business. Samsung dominates mobile in every country but the US. And uh, uh, Apple dominates in the US and, and is really big elsewhere in the world, clear number two. Um, in the rest of the world, they sell so damn many phones. You know, I think phone upgrade cycle is two years and you have one and a half billion phones sold every two years, that's enough for them to offer multiple SKUs. You're gonna sell 30 million consoles a year. That's, that is dwarfed by you know, 750 million phones. So I think that, that answers the question that there's just not the volume to justify that many SKUs. I do think you'll get a premium SKU from Sony with the PlayStation VR because I think it's smart. I doubt you're going to get multiple SKUs on the Xbox. They tend to offer new SKUs as they cut the component cost. And so like this most recent Xbox One S all digital edition, um, same box, just no disk drive, no optical disk drive. But the box is identical because they just jammed all the other, you know, the old stuff in there without the disk drive. So they, there's an empty spot in there. Um, but did they, did they produce a less costly power supply? Probably. Is there a smaller fan? Probably. You know, I don't know. But there's less stuff. Is there one less button to, to load and unload disks? Absolutely. You know, there's no dra drawer. So they cut out. 20, 30, 40 bucks a cost by getting rid of that optical drive. And that allowed them to charge 50 bucks less than the core Xbox One S. And I think you'll see SKUs that happen like that. That's pretty, pretty much been the SKU dynamic. Thank you if you are a Patreon patron for joining us on sifted.net. Thank you if you're watching on YouTube for linking your Prime account to your Twitch account. Instructions are in our show description. And if you have done that in the past, it's one click to re-up. Please renew your subscription. It's $2.50 to Shane so he can keep coming to my house and filming these things. Otherwise, we're going to have to stop doing this. Um, if you are neither a Twitch Prime member joining and helping us or a Patreon patron, follow me on Twitter, please, at Michael Pactor. If you are an Empires and Puzzles player, join my alliance, Achilles TM like trademark, and I promise we'll be nice to you. We want a full alliance and we want to kick some uh, Russian booty. It seems like all Russian players here. If you're watching, you're Russian. Uh, no offense, because I don't really hate the Russians, but we like kicking your ass in Empires and Puzzles. Thanks for joining us on Pactor Factor. We will see you next week.